My father was a professional in France. After he died when I was eight years old, I was more strong in my head, and of course, it's a, it's a part of my motivation every day. The Army was the first time I was thrust into an environment where you really need to be great. You want me to hold your hands and everything? Compete! So I'm working 15-hour days, being away from my son it was a struggle. I was born in Nobony, moving from refugee camp to refugee camp. Being blessed to move to Australia, so I'm very thankful. Describing New Zealand is something I enjoy doing very much. It's a very special place. You feel that there's a bond between the people who live here. They care for each other, they're kind to each other, they're patient to each other. You feel it when you live here. From the doghouse to the penthouse, after two COVID-affected seasons playing exclusively in Australia, the breakers are back home and no one is happier than head coach Modi Mayor, who is on the brink of guiding his side from last place back into the playoffs. The period of time that we spent away, we weren't representing anything. We had players who play for the New Zealand breakers and have never stepped on New Zealand soil. Your roots, your history, your foundation, they are part of your motivation. They are part of your standards. They are part of how you do things, and we missed it. Do you want to say hello? Yeah. Being here has been a special journey for me and my family. Both my daughters were born here, and the timing of moving to New Zealand kind of coincided with our family becoming bigger and happier. Let's go. To commemorate that connection, we named my oldest daughter Amaya, which is a Mori name that represents the halo around the full moon. Ready? It's higher. Yes, it's higher. It's this guy, yes? Your English is getting good, Amayush. I was born in 85 in Los Angeles. That's the Showtime era. I don't think you have a choice. If you're growing up there in this time, I think basketball is going to find you. Um, one of my earliest childhood memories is standing next to Sam Perkins on the floor in the forum and looking up. Uh, it's, it's big. Then me and my family moved to Israel later on. I was eight. And when you're 18 in Israel, you enlist into the military. It's mandatory. Spent almost five years in the Army and didn't think about basketball for one minute during that period. Whoop. Daddy, mm -hmm. I'm for this. Oh, okay. Hide and go seek? Where are you? Come here. The Army was the first time I was thrust into an environment where you really need to be great at what you do. At the end of the day in the military, the stakes are high. Being average is not a good thing. Not for yourself, not for others. A blanket of aggressiveness and intensity in everything you do. Max effort again and again and again. Those are the things, those are the lessons that I took with me and I take with me into coaching, whether it's how you conduct yourself or how you get the best out of other individuals. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Down, down, down! I feel like coaching is my calling and couldn't really see myself doing anything else. Welcome to round 14 NBL action. It's the New Zealand Breakers who have sat top two for most of the season, but coming off three losses from their last four games. Can the Breakers regain their form? Here is Brown. To repair, a layup to get the Frenchman going. The Breakers have come out firing in this second corner. And the Arthur good look. No way they want this more than us. Am I clear? No way they want this more than us. Yeah, steps into the three. Brantley right in front of the Adelaide come bench. Franks drags the rebound in. They can tie up or win it. No green! Clark for three. New Zealand come up with the ball and they hang on. What a game.
Ja. Aua. Uh, what's the plan for today? Uh, today, uh, close out, shoot, finishing. Close out, shoot, finishing, raid room. After maybe we are with uh, two other players. My name is Ryan Huber. I'm from Paris in France. And uh, I started basketball when I was uh, two years old. So yeah, I have a love of basketball because my father played basketball and he played in, uh, with the French national team. So uh, yeah, he had a big career in France, very famous in France. And uh, after he died when I was eight years old. So it was tough for my, my family, for my sister and my mom. I was more strong in my head and of course, it's a, it's a part of my motivation every day, but uh, I want to quit my own career. I'm looking forward. My mom come today. Uh, what time she land? Uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Ryan Huppert is as special of a basketball player as a coach will ever get a chance to meet. This kid is just in love with basketball, and all he wants to do is win games and improve. Just the one. Just the one? Yes. I'm here. I'm here. I miss a little bit my family. You know, all my family live in Paris, so I miss a little bit that. But uh, it's good for me uh, to, to have my, my mom with me in this process, because some, sometimes uh, I have some up and down. And yeah, it's, it's good because, uh, yeah, that's, that's my mom. Après, je vais être venir. There are a lot of very, very good players in the world, so to be at the, at the top level, I need to, to work uh, very hard. And uh, I want to be a lottery pick and uh, uh, go to the NBA and become uh, one of the best two-way players uh, in the league, and yeah, that's my goal. In NBL news, after starting 2023 with a pair of wins, the Breakers have hit the skids once again. Their latest defeat has made it five losses in their last seven, allowing Cairns to move above them into second. The Taipans are in town this week and Breakers fans will be hoping for a change in fortunes, particularly from Australian boomer Will McDowell-White, the son of AFL legend Darrell White. We've had our fair share of, of adversity so far. Uh, you know, things like arriving at 3am and playing at 1pm. At 1 We've shown all year we can get it done in the toughest of circumstances. We, we, we just know how to handle adversity. That's what we're going through right now, and we'll pick it back up. FL was probably the last sport that I've actually started playing, funnily enough. Um, it was you know, a lot of basketball, uh, track and field, uh, tennis swimming. Then Dad said it was time for us to try his sport. You know, as I said, out of all the people in the world, Dad's the one that sits me down, and he's kind of like, you know, uh, I think basketball will be your best shot going forward. And you know, as a young kid, and your know, dad is a quite, quite scary man, to be honest. You know, I said, yes, yes, dad, whatever, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. So the hard, hardest thing was um, I was over in Germany, uh, out of my little stint over there, and there was probably a six-month rough patch I had with back home. Just a lot of, like, childhood friends um, kind of passing away, uh, taking their own lives. And, you know, those are kind of the guys who, you know, make you kind of who you are when you grow up and yeah it was very tough and then the last one to actually you know happen was um, I was actually my best friend yeah um, just woke up to a message around 3 a.m. and didn't go to sleep for a week it felt like uh, so that was tough went to a um, I was kind of in a I guess a psychiatric ward for a bit and just I just I just didn't know how to deal with it so I had to I had to get people to help me the biggest thing was that my younger sister was actually born a couple months after I got back and I look at her as a reincarnation of my best friend who had just recently passed away because now her and I are like inseparable best friends, you know. Every time I go home, she's the, she's the one I want to see the most, you know. Um, so that was the toughest time I've had so far. But then it's just, you know, it's great to see that family's the one that brings you back to who you are. So I was a very special person to me. This is a game that the league will be watching very closely. Good luck to both teams underway, and it will be Zali Arfa. There is the first steal of the game for Hope. It's our first points of the game. Here is Ruper stepping through the lane. Harder with an offensive rebound. Timeout! Timeout! 
Timeout. The emotive ball is called timeout. Stop being in stop. Your stop going up. It's your open shoot. Ball. What else can I ask? Stop. Oh, Want me to hold your hands and everything? Compete. Down, watch, no one switches. Oh, that many runs it down. Oh, the hands of McDowell. McDowell like a water bear. Oh, McDowell, watch. Tremendous basketball. Oh, McDowell, watch. Oh, McDowell, watch. Take it off. Why not? Shoot it, look. For the game! Oh, left it short! Tom Abercrombie left it short! We're playing average, like everyone. This was never the plan for this team. Average doesn't get us where we need to go. Average doesn't beat the Kansas Taipans. And we need to be a lot better than average. You know, we know we can't just come into a game and win. Uh, we need to you know, set the standard at practice before we can come in here and just, we can just think we can get a win. Good. So Will knows that. That's half the battle. See you next one. After a heartbreaking loss against Illawarra, New Zealand have now lost seven of their last nine games. And it doesn't get any easier with a trip to the home of the champs, the Sydney Kings. And nothing but a win will do to stop the rot and close the gap on Cairns. Best way to get through adversity is stick together. Um, hard times come for everybody. I think when your hard times come, they show who you are and they test your character. And I want this team, and I know this team, who this team is, we are tough. So it's less about the outcome and more about what it takes to get there, that journey. So if we continue to focus on the little things and keep getting better, I know we'll be wherever we're supposed to be. Jarrell Brantley was beyond the QE signings. Jarrell Brantley was my most important signing in the offseason. What's special about him is that he's a galvanizing force. Me being me just brings people together. Um, and that's what I'm learning to realize. So that's been a journey that I'm trying to grow into, as well as just being the best I can be on the court. This group is super relentless. When it comes to like the core of this group, well, our backbone and, and what we're built off of is just not giving up. The fact that we can beat every team on any given day is great. Doing it in the most meaningful moments. There's the most pressure is a challenge that this group has yet to meet, and I'm interested to see how we overcome this. He's winning this one of one. Let's try it again. He can't go past the Kings. Left hand, that is tough to stop. Continue to play through Jarrell Brantley, and he's now the second breaker in the double figures. He's got 11. And they blow that play up, and all of a sudden, momentum going all the way to the Sydney Kings. Moni and Moyes, Pacino, not bothered. Stop playing like you have something to lose. No one but no one thinks you got the game. You're open, shoot the ball all day long. Justin Simon from the corner. And Bradley with 23 of his own. Pulls up. The bank. Sunday transaction from Jarrell Bradley. Sydney down three. Suarez pops down. It doesn't go. And the breakers have just knocked off the ladder leading Sydney Kings 93 to 88 on their home floor. Bodie, good game, man. You guys were great. Way to have a downhand man. Good job. Really good job. Good game. Very proud of our guys. It's a lot of stuff that's stacked against us in this situation. And I came out and played like men. Confident, tough, humble, but unfazed and unscared of the moment. And those are great signs. And I'm obviously very happy. The inland taipan is the most venomous snake on the planet. If backed into a corner, it will definitely bite to defend themselves. And they do pack a punch, and they'll, uh, they'll strike out. The one thing I do appreciate is they strike with accuracy. They only attack when cornered or provoked. 
In the NBL, you need to expect the unexpected, and the Cairns Taipans are proof of that. Coach Adam Ford has engineered a remarkable turnaround, defying all the odds to take the side from second last to second overall. The perfect review we had was pre-season when everyone picked us 10th, and there was no seed of doubt planted in this group. Everyone in this room were doing it together. They all believe in themselves. Some of them got a chip on their shoulder, you know. Everyone on this team's got an ambition. I was working in the company uh, that drug test guys who want to go work in the mines. And it was a nine to fiver, Monday through Friday, great pain job. And I, I, I felt the most miserable I ever had. From there, I was able to get an intern position and that was an unpaid position. So I'm working 15 hour days, also coaching at state league level, uh, which was also unpaid. Um, living off noodles in, in share houses and, and, you know, living with other coaches going through the grind. And, you know, I've had to try and get my foot in the door and then shove my way in. You know, I know what it's like not to be in this industry. And so I'll do everything in my power to make sure I can stay in it. And in NBL news, rookie head coach Adam Ford will be having a short stay in Sydney. The West Aussie has parted company with the Columbia franchise after just one season. Sydney was, professionally was amazing, personally was a struggle. And I know it crossed over and affected my work because I lived in hotels, I lived in Airbnbs, and I would FaceTime my son. You know, we missed our first Christmas, missed his first birthday. Ugh. Being away from Kylie and, and, and Carter uh, was a struggle. So knowing that whatever decision we made next, we had to do it as a family. Yeah, two points are, stay with it. There's no way I would be able to do what I do here in Cairns without making those professional errors that I made in Sydney. I think I was able to tap in more to the younger talent than what I realised I could. And so to sort of take that model up here and say, okay, Let's embrace that underdog status and let's put together a team that has the least experience in franchise history. I think we can make that work. Yeah, you go crank it, because I want to try and do like we're coming out of timeouts. And give us something like I would like. This is too slow for me, mate. You can preach culture, you know, and it's such a buzzword these days as well. But really, it's the people you bring in that drive it. And they're really driven by Taj. And I mean, he's not just an on-off switch. He's just on. McCall goes to work, draws a foul, and gets it done as well. Chance at a three-point play. My name is Tajir McCall from Philadelphia, PA, United States of America. Haven't said that in a minute. My childhood was like every other Philadelphian. Uh, tough spots, good spots, uh, up and downs, heartbreak. Uh, the situation I grew up in, the, the area I grew up in, not everybody makes it and gets a good chance at life. So you got you to fight to be different and fight to, to, to get what you want and what you, what you think you deserve. Once you're in Taj's inner circle of like, hey, you can hang with us, you know, he's got your back like nobody else. And um, we ran a lot of who we're going to bring in in year two through him. I've been told you that Ford is assistant GM. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you, he was assistant GM? Uh, I wouldn't use that title. I don't get paid for that, so I can't use that one. I'm not Ford's assistant GM. But he just respects my mind for the game and my mind for people. The chemistry, the connections, the stories, the bonds you build is, is with shows. And that's what the biggest thing is for me. Well, this video is appropriate, right? This is, uh, you guys, it's, it's, you know Christopher Walken, but this is relevant to us right now. Forty is different as a coach, just for the simple fact. He's more, he wants to hear what's, what's going on. What, what do you think will work? What do you think? How can we help? What do you want to run first up on offense? Your call. Delay? Beautiful. You feel that energy from your coach, someone who cares about you, because you're not playing for yourself now. You have a brother or a, a, a dad. You know what I mean? Someone other than you that you care about and that you know cares about you, so you want to do more for them. Over to the NBL now, and after defeats in three of their last four and losing MVP candidate Keanu Pinder to a serious facial injury, the Cairns Taipans are on a slide at the worst time. 
And the task had just got harder with the length scratching of their emotional leader, Taj McCall. Now back to third in the table, they take on Perth tonight and must win for a chance to finish above New Zealand and earn direct passage to the playoffs. They are here tonight, the Taipans, with the bare essentials. But don't count them out, Jackie Boy, don't count them out. They're playing for second. Hogue walks into the three. Shannon wow. Wow. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. What a pass! Wannenberg inside. What a poor defensive effort. And the Cairns Taipans record one of their gutsiest wins of NBL 23. We've taken the, the youngest and most inexperienced uh, team in franchise history, and now we've just recorded the second best win rate. I think like we tick a lot of boxes. Hopefully now we'll just sit back and see what Brisbane can get done at their joint against New Zealand, and either we're preparing for a plane on the Thursday, Friday next week, or we got a, a bit of time off to rest some sore bodies. Uh, it's kind of season defining, really. Uh, you know, this is the difference between top two and playing games. Uh, obviously, Brisbane aren't playing for much, but you know, we're playing for everything. 2.1 on the clock. The Breakers looking for second spot on the NBL ladder. Liarpa elevates for the triple. Didn't get enough on it. We're going to need more time here. We are going to the extra period. You work through this. Oh, yeah. Now you do the work. This is about the team who is stronger here now. The team that wants it more. The team that does the small thing. You got this. Play the right way. You got this. Let's go. This. One, it's one after the look and knocks down the triple. Sobey is shut down by Rob Lowe. Well, good hands there from Abercrombie. Stolen away from Sobey, and now the New Zealand Breakers have got it where they want it. Breakers by five. And they are going to climb to second on the ladder. For the first time in eight years, the New Zealand Breakers are having a semi final home court advantage. They've survived overtime here against the Brisbane Bullets and prevailed by five. It's full time in Brisbane. New Zealand 80, Brisbane 75. had a moment there where all the work and all the sacrifice, all the self-doubt and everything that comes into this had a small moment of validation, I guess. I mean, the world. Welcome to the seeding qualifier from the Cairns Convention Centre. Great to have your company as the Taipans go head to head with the Jack Jumpers. Winner of this game straight through to the semi final series against New Zealand. Huge. That's the, the destination you're trying to get to. And both these teams have had really good seasons. Upstairs for Magna. It drops. Oh, a call, a little out of control. Here's Isaac White from the elbow. Nice work. Cairns have gone pretty cold to finish this quarter. Body up! Too easy! Time out! God damn it! You gotta defend! You gotta defend! Taipans are gonna have to dig deep from here. Jesus Christ, fellas. We gotta stop hemorrhaging points. We gotta stop hemorrhaging. Defend without fouling. Get the rebound. Get in. Go. Come on! Ooh, call downhill. So good. Qual drives. If there was any chance for Cairns, it's now gone begging for Tasmania. They keep Cairns to 79. Look, you know, for a lot of these guys, it's their first, uh, you know, postseason type game, and they're understanding the, the nature of that beast. Um, we've got to start a sudden death game now on Sunday we need to prepare for, so, you know, we can't be too down on ourselves because. We've got two days to prepare for Perth up here. I didn't want to go to New Zealand anyway. My name is Bu Kual. I'm South Sudanese. I was born in Noboni, refugee camp on the border of Ethiopia, moving from refugee camp to refugee camp, and then finally having been blessed to move to Australia. So I'm very thankful. 
picked up basketball when I was 14. Um, I started late. I wanted to be a soccer player. Oh, good job, boo! One of the first things Forty told me was, um, I can't promise you nothing. They're a very experienced team, very tough roster. Our rotation was tight. So I knew what I was getting myself into, but to actually experience it firsthand was a different story. Here's a detailed analysis on Bull. Now, Bull comes from a low mid-major, and he's playing out of Knox, and no one else wants him, but this is why he's perfect for us. One band, one sound means we're, we're doing this together. And you can see it day in, day out when we play a game. It's not, it's not one guy that's the focus. We, we together. We brothers and we family. So one fall, we all fall. One win, we all win. We together, bro. Fourth meeting of the season between the two teams. The away team has won every single meeting between Cairns and Perth across the season. And it'll be the home team in possession first. And Bull Quall aggressive. Pack it, pack it. Look to be aggressive. Be aggressive. They can't contain you on the wing. They can't contain any of you on the wing. Let's go. Hope for the logo. Oh, yeah. It's Quall piling on all sorts of pain now. Same action. Penetrate and pitch to the open shooter. Easy bucket for Paul Quall. The Taipans have done it. The little engine that could. Got the train back on the tracks and is headed for the playoffs against the Sydney Kings. They win in sudden death. Man, keep doing your thing. I'm cheering for you, man. Uh, I appreciate that, brother. Thank Hell you. Yeah. Keep going. Thank you. I mean, we've had we've had adversity all year. You can look at the whole season that we've had. We've had guys go down, guys in and out of the lineup, losing big games. We could have easily secured second place, and then we lose against Tassie. But you know, we found a way to win this one. That's, that's just the story of our season. We keep fighting. I was a um, I was a season ticket holder. Me and my brother, the Wildcats, in the 90s. We used to sit right up at the back of uh, the Perth Convention Centre. We're now on the sideline watching someone on my team make a game and shot. It's fun. It's great. Like it's been a long journey. And if I wasn't doing this, I'd be doing basketball for free somewhere. Uh, so it's cool that I'm able to do it here in Cairns and and vibe for the families. If this story has raised concerns for you or someone you know, help is available. Call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or Beyond Blue on 1300 22 4636.